Ooh, welcome everybody to the NFL presidential address for week four. Shout out to all of you guys who watched week three. Hope you bet those plays. We did well. Had a winning week for my clients as well. And I really feel like I'm set for a big, big run. If you guys have never watched the show, here's how it works. I'm going to go through every single game on the board and tell you what to bet, how to bet, and if not to bet. There will be some passes along the way. I think I have four games that I am passing on. We'll get to that a little later. We're going to do the Thursday night football game as well. Let's start right there. Dallas going in to New York. They're playing Danny Dimes and the Giants, and there has been money bet all over the place on the Dallas Cowboys with the line moving from minus 4.5 to minus 5.5. There actually were some fours on the board, so a lot of money coming in on Dallas and also a bunch of money coming in on the over. It has been bet up from 44 to 45. I'm going to make this real short, guys. I like the Dallas Cowboys here at minus five and a half, and I'll tell you why really quick. First off, we've seen this show before. We saw it last year. Dallas came into New York, beat them 40 to nothing. Now, I don't think we're going to see a 40 to nothing type score, but I do think Dallas is going to turn their season around and get going, and the New York Giants are the perfect foil. Let me explain how this Dallas team works. If you run the ball down their throat, they are likely going to lose. We saw that against the New Orleans Saints. Alvin Kamara had a monster of a day on them, and we saw them against Baltimore as well. This Dallas team cannot stop the run. And not only that, but this Dallas team really needs to get up on teams, get two scores ahead of teams, put them into a one-dimensional offense, and let that world-class pass rush run rampant. Now they play the New York Giants, who have finally won a football game. Congratulations to them. And really have found a great wide receiver in neighbors. Now, the problem with the Giants here is they don't match up well against this Dallas team. They are not a team that is going to run the ball down your throat. They're a team that is going to try to pass the ball. And that works perfectly for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, obviously, Danny Dimes is going to run the ball. And clearly, the Giants are going to still run the ball. I mean, I think they're going to have 16 to 20 attempts. But I do believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to score and score fast. Once the Dallas Cowboys are ahead, they're going to let that pass rush loose. I will tell you this, guys. If Dallas is up by... 10 points or more in game, I would actually bet Dallas on a blowout. I think this Dallas team is much better than they've shown the last two weeks. I think they've really played badly the last two weeks, but this is a team that needs to get right and get right quick. I think the division is still theirs for the taking, and I do not believe in this New York Giants team. Plus, hey, we got them off of a win. We're going to take Dallas Cowboys minus Five and a half, and I think this game could be a complete blowout. Now, before we turn our attention to the next game, which will be the New Orleans Saints and Atlanta Falcons, I want to point out what happens when you buy my package on Sunday. So every Sunday, I sell my plays to the general public for $29. These are all the plays that I am betting on. This Sunday, as of now, I have found five bets, including a big, 4% total that you seriously do not want to miss. I'm on a 25 and 9 run in those plays. Um, but if you buy my entire package, you get all five of my client bets plus analysis and thoughts on every single game on the board. You'll also get the teasers that I'm betting as well as my Circa picks. Now, normally this is $29. I have a promo for you all. And I expect a big, big Sunday. Use the promo code GAMEDAY10. That's $10 off of my Sunday-only package. That brings it down to $19. It'll come with at least five client bets, plus bets on every single game on the board. If you've never played my Sunday NFL, this Sunday is the perfect time to do it. It's only 19 bucks. And I really feel like, and I will tell you next week that I was right, I really feel like I'm about to have a breakout day. So please use the promo code GAMEDAY10. 
game day 10 and get $10 off of my Sunday NFL package. Okay, no more promotion. We're going through the board top to bottom. Let's go. New Orleans plus one and a half against Atlanta. The total in this game was 44. It was bet down to 42. Let me start by saying this. We bet the Falcons against Kansas City last week, and frankly, the Falcons should have cashed. Frankly, I think the Falcons should have won that game. Not taking the field goal with four and a half minutes to go was idiotic. Raheem Morris, what are you doing? If you get the field goal, you have to stop the Chiefs and score a field goal to win. If you get a touchdown there, you're giving the Chiefs at least three minutes to get a field goal to win the game. Either way, you have to stop Kansas City. No matter what, you got to stop KC. So put up the field goal, stop them, put up another field goal, and win the damn game. And on top of all of that, there was a blatantly bad missed pass interference call at the end of the game that also cost Atlanta a chance to cover and win that game. Now we will turn our attention to this game. This is a crucial game for both teams and Tampa Bay because all three of them will duke it out for the division. I took the Falcons to win the division minus 120, and I still think they win the division and win this game. The Falcons are loaded with talent and are starting to play much better. As the season progresses and, te- and the team finds chemistry, I think despite their crappy coach, they will win more games than they lose. The Falcons are three for 17 in third downs. They've played three games and they are three for 17 in third downs. Now one would say that's terrible, horrible. Why would you bet the Falcons here? Because guess why people, everything comes back to the means. They aren't gonna end the year at, you know, four and a half percent conversion rate. That's math was completely wrong there. They're not gonna end the year three out of 17, every 17 uh, third downs. They are due for a big game of third down conversions, and this is going to be it. Now, as far as the Saints, impressive. Impressive first two games for the Saints. And then, voila, back to this planet. I don't think the Saints are that great a football team. I think Derek Carr is about to make some mistakes. I think this game has got field goal written over it, all over it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a one-pointer, 17-16, 21-20. I do like the under, and I like Atlanta on the money line. Now we turn our attention to Pittsburgh and Indy. Pittsburgh is minus two. The total is 40. Yes, 40. 4-0. Now, don't get me wrong. There should be a four in this total, but that four should come after a three. This total should be 34, and we're playing the under. We're going right back to the well, guys. We've played the Pittsburgh under all year so far, and nothing is changing here. They've played three games, and all three games have been stone-cold unders, and now the books are giving us a 40? Thank you. But why? It must be that Pittsburgh has three touchdowns in three games, averaging a whole one touchdown per game. Or maybe it's because they've held their opponents to 10 points, 6 points, and 10 points in three games. Two touchdowns in three games from their offense, and they've allowed three touchdowns in three games, two touchdowns in three games defensively. That's five touchdowns in all three games combined. And this total is a 40. If there are five touchdowns scored in this game, you can add a field goal to that. And it still goes under the total. Baffling. Pittsburgh has allowed 8.7 points per game. They've scored 17 points per game. Indianapolis, they've gone under two out of three games so far. Okay, enough. Blah, 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 blah. Let's not overthink this. Take Pittsburgh and Indy under the total of 40. And for the record, I like Indy plus two. I think Indianapolis wins this game outright, and I feel like this game is 17-16 written all over it. I think this Pittsburgh team is totally overrated. I get that they are 3-0 and and have the best D in football, but they have played no one. And now they're a favorite on the road against Indianapolis. 
Indy almost beat Green Bay. They had a tough loss against Houston. They have at least played two out of three real teams. I like Indy and I like the under. Now let's look at Jacksonville going into Houston. Man, Jacksonville was once four and a half in this game. Then we woke up this morning, six and a half. Ten minutes ago, plus seven. The total in this game is 45. Sometimes teams that we think are just good stink. The Jags are one of those teams, and there are certainly a lot of problems in Jacksonville. This team has not put together a good game yet. They played a great first half against Miami. They played a great second half against Cleveland, and they had a really good 30 seconds against the Bills. If they lose here to Houston, their season is done. And that would make you think, we'll get their best. But hey, if they lost to Buffalo, their season was basically done. And we got their worst. They literally didn't even leave Jacksonville. Now, I really want to play Houston here. I want to play Houston bad. But man, now that the line has moved to seven, I'm actually going to look at this horrible Jags team. I think there's some value there. I think Houston is overvalued. I think Jacksonville is undervalued. Even though the chart says Jacksonville plus six or sevens on the board, and that's where we're going to go. Small, real small, Peter Dinklage type small lean on the Jacksonville Jags. Minnesota Green Bay, plus three originally for Minnesota. Now it's plus two and a half. The total in this game is 43 and a half. And I am very, very impressed with both teams right now. Green Bay has won two in a row without love. Their running game has been electric and their D lights out. Minnie has won three games in a row. Darnoldson has looked un Darnold has looked unbelievable. They are clicking on all cylinders and their defense lights freaking out. This Vikings team has gone under all three games. This Vikings defense has allowed seven, 17, and six points. And the 17 was against San Fran, which is incredibly impressive. Green Bay has had a real rough out had a real rough outing in game one against Philadelphia. Since then, their defense have allowed 14 and 10 points. Here we have the number one running team in all of football, Green Bay, against the number three rushing D in all of football, Minnesota. Many is also the second best team behind Pittsburgh in points allowed defensively, and Green Bay, even after Philly scored a hundred on them is in the top half at shutting teams down. Although both these teams can score and have been scoring, I think we see a very slow, methodical game, a lot of running and some lights out defense. Take Minnesota and Green Bay under the total. Next, we turn our attention to Cincinnati going into Carolina, and we got Cincinnati now at minus four and a half. The over in this game is 47 and a half. Let's start right off the bat. This line was five and a half, and then since he laid an egg on Monday night, and now it is four and a half. Okay, thank you for the extra point. We're going to take it. I also, just for the record, would happily bet Cincinnati here at minus six and a half. Here is what we know about this Bengals team. They can score a lot of points if they need to. We just saw them put up 35 against Washington. Now, I grant you the Commodores, as I call them, have a really bad defense, but so does Carolina. And I think Cincinnati puts up 31 in this game. This is also a great spot to bet Cincinnati as everyone is so down on them and their market value is the lowest it's been in a long, long time. Frankly, I still think Cincinnati makes the playoffs. We have seen this story before. The Bengals start terribly every year and then they go on a big, fat, juicy run. Well, now it's time for the run. They get the Panthers coming off their first win this century and Dalton he showed he still has it what a perfect time to bet against the Panthers Carolina has allowed 47 26 and 22 points against them and none of those teams were the greatest show on turf there is simply no way they keep Cincinnati from scoring and scoring a lot as for Carolina keeping pace come on guys 
If Dalton was so good, he would have been a starter for someone this decade. He has, he had a good game. Okay, congratulations, Redhead. You had a good game. But one thing we know about Andy Dalton, he is consistently inconsistent. And he is set up for a perfect day of interceptions and pick sixes. Bottom line, we have the Bengals at their lowest market value in yours and the Panthers at their highest. Seems like Cincinnati is the bet to me. Take Cincy minus four and a half. And also, guys, I do like the over. Rams, Chicago. Kudos to the Rams. Unbelievable victory last week. However, I might actually be betting Chicago for the first time in memory. Is this the game the Bears win? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I do. This is the game they win. Well, first off, let's start with, I like the under again here. 41 points in a game the Bears are playing in. Do they think finally they will score? Take the 24 out against Tennessee as it was all defense. And this Bears team has done nothing all year. But they are playing a very bad Rams defense. And they are going to finally get some points. This is the week they do it. With all that said, I think this is the week they might actually win. Now, I would never take points here. I'm not going to lay minus two. But I will take them on the money line, currently minus 135. Let's bottom line this game. The Bears have an incredible defense and should hold the Rams to under 17 points. The Rams have a horrendous defense and Caleb and the Bears did get going against Indy. The Bears had 26 first downs in that game and 332 yards in the air alone. I think they get 17 to 24 on Sunday. Rams have the second worst D in points allowed this season, allowing 11 more points per game than the Bears. Although, as I mentioned, I like the under, my bet on this game is the Bears. Can the Bears start the season 2-2? Two and two? Why, I think they can. And then I'll even celebrate with some crappy Chicago lasagna on crust, otherwise known as Chicago deep dish pizza. Take the Bears, minus 135. Denver. The Jets, Denver was plus seven, not anymore, plus seven and a half across the board. The total in this game, 38 and a half. And it's not like I think every game will go under. I think a lot will. But I definitely think this game will go under. Sure, Denver put up 26 points on Tampa Bay. But Tampa Bay has no defense and especially no secondary. They will not even get a sniff of that number against the Jets, and frankly, the line tells you that. Anytime you see a minus seven and a total of 40, the bookmakers are saying the dog won't put up more than 14 points. And frankly, I don't see Denver getting close to 14. I think Denver puts up 10 in this game. This Jets team held the Pats to three points, and although the Pats have the worst though in football, I don't think Denver is that much better. Okay, they're better. But they're not 14 points better. Denver has also shown a good D. They held Tampa Bay to 7 points and Pittsburgh to 13. Granted, anybody could hold Pittsburgh to 13. As for the Jets, this is a team that wants to win low-scoring games. This is a team that wants to run the ball. This is a team that wants to keep Rodgers out of trouble. If the Jets put up 24 and Denver puts up 14, this game still goes under, and I don't think the Jets put up 24, and I don't think Denver puts up 14. My predicted score is 20 to 13. Take the Jets and Denver under the total. As for Philadelphia and Tampa Bay, I am passing in this game. Way too much injuries going on here. Let's move on. Washington, Zona. Washington plus three. The line here, the total is 50 or 50 and a half. I will make this fast. We are going with the over in this game, and especially given that it is less than that dreaded 51. Washington has put up 38, 21, and 20 points and have playmakers everywhere. Arizona just put put up, started the year, putting up 28 against the Bills. They put up 41 against the Rams. And yes, they shot the bat against the Lions. But we know this Arizona team can score, and we know they can score fast. And we're getting them off a terrible offensive performance. 
They are also playing Washington, who happens to have the second worst pass D in all of football and the fourth worst in allowing points. I cannot find a side in this game, but I have to believe that one, if not both of these teams are going to get into the 30s. Take Washington and Arizona over 50. Guys, before we continue with the rest of the games, I got to rem- remind you all, promo code GAMEDAY10. GAMEDAY10, that's $10 off of my Sunday NFL package. It'll cost you 19 bucks. You will get thoughts on every game on the board, plus all my actual bets that I am making and my Circa bets as well. Okay, New England, plus 10 against San Fran. I will make this quick. No Kittle, no Debo, no Bosa, no Word, no Worries. Without any of these players, they hit that field goal against the Rams. They're up by 10 with a few minutes to go. I think regardless of how good the Pats D is, San Fran is putting up 24 points on this team, and New England is putting up maybe, if they're lucky, three points. This game has blowout written all over it. I also think it's the last game we ever see Jacoby Brissett play football. Take San Fran minus 10, blow out City. Regardless of the fact that money right now is pouring in on New England, I don't care. San Fran minus 10. I think this game has like 30 to 3, 20 or to 3 written all over it. Cleveland, Vegas. I want to bet the Raiders here. I think the Browns team stinks, but we missed the line move. Uh, It was minus one for the Browns. It's now minus one and a half for the Raiders. If I had to bet this game, I would take the Raiders on the money line. But honestly, I don't have to bet this game. So let's move on. Kansas City and L.A. I got nothing, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what Herbert's going to do. I don't know who this uh, Chargers team is. Kansas City seems to win extremely close games all the time. They have their refs in their back pocket. I'm going to pass. Now, Baltimore and Buffalo. Well, guys, that's where I stop and say to you, I have a big play on that game. If you want it, use the promo code GAME10 and buy my Sunday package. Teaser of the week, Indy plus eight, Jets minus one and a half. We don't do Monday games on this show. Thank you all for watching week four of the NFL presidential address. It is a privilege doing this show. It is an honor. I will read all the comments. Let's beat Teddy's opening line report and views. Let's beat Bet on its views. Let's make this the number one watch show at Wager Talk. Love you all, guys. Have a great, great week.